come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the Saturday Night Freak Show regulars and talked about ad nauseum for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. And if you stick around, we're going to answer some mail later in the show and do wrap ups after that. So hang with us. Who are these internet radio superstars? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we're watching a movie that was chosen by Michaela. Michaela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just you guys are throwing it in <laughs> they're on places where I'm not used to it. So I'm not ready. I'm like, it's, yeah, who, it's okay, who, Sean. Who, I understand. Who, I get who's it. Doing it. I get it. Who picked? <laughs> Loud and clear, Sean. I understand. <laughs> All right, so what did we watch tonight? Watch Wes Craven's Cursed. From the year... 2005. All right. So this would have been after his run with the Scream series. Yes. But before My Soul to Take. <laughs> that movie everyone loves. Oh, everyone loves. <laughs> that movie's not as bad as everybody says it is. No, it's but not it's, a great it's movie. not great. <laughs> right, but it's not horrible. I've seen worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw all of it. I don't you I'm you probably here for it. I saw I went and saw a test screening for it when I lived in LA. Oh. I got picked to go see it. And when I saw it, they had from what I remember, um every every ending that they had like on the DVD, it says alternate ending mm-hmm. and what have you and everything. All of them were on the test screening version of this movie. It was the weirdest fucking thing. That I've sounds ever confusing. Seen. It was confusing <laughs> as hell. Like that movie was a mess when I saw it. And it's still kind of a mess now. But yeah. I, I, I think I've watched it once since, but it's just, yeah. Colin has, yeah. A, uh, I think, a favorable opinion of it. He's gone back and revisited it more than I have. I really didn't like it. The first, This is my soul to take we're yes. talking about. Mm-hmm. I really didn't like it uh, the first time I saw yeah. it. But, yeah, upon a you know, rewatch, I'm like, this, you know, there's like, my soul to take shares a lot with Shocker mm. to me, where they're like, those are like really personal Wes Craven movies. Like, you don't, I don't think of Wes Craven as a personal, you know, story right. filmmaker, right? Yeah. Right. He's more of like a craftsman who got his start in horror movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, or the guy, born. like, he got, mm-hmm. yeah, or born, born. Mm-hmm. Was born with Sean Cunningham. <laughs> that was the creator of Friday the 13th. They were doing mm-hmm. like nudie movies back mm-hmm. in the Indeed. late 60s. But Wes Craven's like a weird cat because he came to uh, becoming a filmmaker. Like, he was an adult, right? I mean, his parents were strictly religious. I'm not sure what branch Mm -hmm. of uh, Christianity we had going on there. But uh, they didn't let him see movies, like television, nothing. So he didn't get exposed to films until he was, like, in college, Mm -hmm. you know, and then saw all these things and said, this is what I want to do, you know, make these movies. Yeah. Then he kind of fell into the horror genre. Well, and even after he did Last House on the Left, and it was such an upsetting and traumatizing experience for most of the people involved that uh, after that, he was like, that's it, not doing horror anymore. And if you ever doubt that as a fan, your words mean nothing, a teenage boy fan met him in public one time and said, I really love, you know, you're a great horror director. You need to do more horror. And that's what inspired need, him to do. You need to do something badass. Yeah. I believe were his words. Yeah. <laughs> that's what inspired him to do, to return to horror. So if you ever meet someone at a convention, you think your words don't matter. They do. There you go. And that so, that kid saying, brought right? scream. Hmm? That was a-, a nightmare on Elm Street even. Cause yes. that was, you know, before that movie even existed, the only horror movie I'd done at this point was last house on the left. So yeah. we got the West Craven we know and love because some teenage boy was like, yeah, keep doing that. Talk to your heroes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or don't. Cause it's only disappointing, but talk to your heroes. Talk to them, but filter yourself, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't, expect, you know, expectations low. Yeah. Keep it cool. Yeah. Don't meet yeah, your no. heroes. Yeah, it's exactly. Not- be disappointing. Well, I think we we had a you know I think we did Scream Two on this podcast we before need. we spoke we about Wes Craven. That was shortly after he died. I think I believe so. We did that? I don't think was it was shortly before? after. I think it was definitely after he died. Didn't we do a Wes Craven movie after he died? We ta- I remember talking about him. Mm. We talked about. Well, I remember talking about him, sure, but I don't think it was uh, Scream Two was well after. I think. Yeah, it was well after. But we did something where we just was that the last the latest one we did after he died. I think I think so. Huh. Yeah. You tell yeah. us, listener. Go back mm-hmm. and listen to our <laughs> we should extensive have a list library of, of movies. Right. But, uh, like, he, I mean, he's significant for, I think, like, in the horror genre, even though, you know, maybe his heart wasn't entirely into it. I mean, you know, he, he was good at doing it, but I don't know. Mm. And, you know, I mean, obviously, like, A Nightmare on Elm Street was something that he wrote and directed. He wrote and directed Last House of Hills Have Eyes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he had an aptitude for it. Um, but he... 
is unique in the fact that I think he achieved mainstream success, you know, crazy good success in that genre three times, mm-hmm. at least with Last House, with Nightmare in on separate Elm Street, decades. Yeah. And with Scream. Yeah. So this is uh, the movie that we watched tonight, Cursed, then. This is mm-hmm. in the post-Scream, but before Scream 4, when he went, yep. you know, because everybody mm-hmm. eventually goes back to the thing that, you know, they were most popular for. Right. Yes. Uh, and it was the dream reuniting of the creative team, right? Kevin Williamson, the writer of Scream. And the creator and- of Dawson's Creek as well. Can't forget that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for this You're goddamn really right. Can't yeah, I can't forget. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's very yes. true. No, but he is the writer of all four Scream movies. You mm-hmm. know, the dream team, him and Wes Craven. So. He's not really. I well, mean, not the third one. No, I mean, not the third one was mostly Aaron Kruger. But he's still credited but, on it, yeah, right? He's still credited yeah. on it. And he's actually, I think he's only credited as executive producer on Scream 3. He, I'm sure there was an outline. Yeah, there's a story and by he yeah. gave, Was it a story by Because yeah. yeah. he gave yeah. Aaron Kruger ideas for it. But Aaron Kruger was the main writer on mm. that. He wrote Scream 4, uh, but that went through heavy rewrites, and that's when they brought in Aaron Kruger again. Really? But for, you only got to get 20% for a credit, though, right? I think so. Yep. Yeah. But yep. he mm-hmm. had... Uh, I can rules. tell mm-hmm. by that movie he yeah. had a bigger hand in that. Because, yeah. whew. Woo, well, say. Williamson also <laughs> wrote "I Know What You Did Last Summer," yes. mm-hmm. and uh, which one it. is it? It's "Killing Mrs. Tingla," "Teaching Mrs. Tingla." Teaching it Mrs. was Tingle. originally "Killing Mrs. Yeah. Tingla." So he's the king of '90s teen horror. He also had a hand in he executive Halloween, produced Halloween H two O. Yeah, and then he created famously, I guess, twice Dawson's Creek for the CW yeah. and the Vampire yeah. Diaries, which is yeah. still going on. To no, just ended. He's magic. Just ended. Yeah. Did just it? Had, yeah, just ended. Had the last episode like oh, a couple oh. weeks ago. How would you how know? Was it, Do you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how was, how was <laughs> it? My Twitter feed. How, how was the finale? Did it? Did uh, it do did the not, series justice? Tears. Did it apparently, there were tears. Uh, I didn't. See, I don't like. Uh, how did it affect I'm not a big you? fan of uh, uh, romantic vampires. Sean's a big Ian Summerholder fan. <laughs> uh, hey, he was good and lost. Was, uh, I like that. that was yeah. right. Shocking! Shocking when he exited that show. Spoiler warning. But. He died in a plane. Yeah, I know that's what. Yeah, that's why I remember his character. It was like that was unexpected that they took him out. Was yeah. that the first season? That was first season. Yeah, he died. Yeah, He's they weren't doing that all the time it's back then. The no. Killing off people out of TV shows. It's not Game of Thrones rules back. Yeah. Right, really yeah, that's very yeah. true. Game of right. Thrones, Walking Dead, broke mm-hmm. the mold, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what was the expectation of this movie? I guess, like, if you can get these two people who created mm-hmm. the Scream franchise back together, now they're going to take on werewolves. Scream with I, werewolves. Yeah, I think they're trying to reignite the, the you know the magic they captured with Scream yeah. in, in the early two thousands instead of the early nineties. This movie doesn't this movie feel like you guys? It's like ten years too late. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ten years like, too late. Like like if it would have <laughs> been in nineteen ninety five, ninety six, fucking box office gold. Yep. You know. Yeah. yeah like, ten years too late. On even this the movie. cast, like like I know. Yes. Like, like what Dawson's Creek had wrapped up like okay so this movie came out in 2005 but it was took two and a half years to make so yes, it was it being did. filmed in 2003 ish yes so um Dawson's Creek had just finished I think it was 2003 that Dawson's Creek um finished. Dawson's Creek it, Dawson's Creek had just finished uh Arrested Development had just started and Portia de Rossi's in this so that's pertinent so um, Joshua Jackson Joshua Jackson in, uh, had just Dawson's wrapped Creek. Dawson's Creek yeah. so yeah this is a weird time for a lot of these actors to be in something like this 2003 Dawson's yeah. Creek All right. wrapped up yay, yay. useless yay. knowledge yay. <laughs> well it is I mean like you're saying it has that kind of a decade out of time flavor because I mean you know they well, I guess what we're saying is that uh, Christina Ricci's mm-hmm. character works for uh, Craig, uh, not Craig Kilborn, the <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, the it's late, Craig late, Kilborn. Kilborn. It is the Craig Kilborn, yeah. yeah. Who I don't think at the time that By this the, movie actually came right, out. Right, yeah. he was gone. Still, he was gone yeah. at that point, I'm yeah. sure. And the big, uh, like, guest that they have, you know, that they're, you know, she's meeting with this guy's agent, this guy's in the movie, it's Scott Bale, He's and you're like, big a bigger portion of this movie than I thought yeah, he'd be. He's like, in it a lot. How was he relevant in 2005? I don't know. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. Well, that's why we're asking, did this have <laughs> yeah. something to do with the fact that the Fonz, Henry Winkler, was in the Scream movie, so they were going to put somebody else for Synergy. Happy Days in... I guess so. For good yeah. luck. Yeah. We need it. Yeah. I don't believe that that was why. But I'd it's probably, funny yeah. anyway that, you know... Yeah, that do you that think happened. they were just copy and pasting Wes Craven things at this point? They were like, you did this <laughs> before, let's, you feels know... Like. Yeah, feels like. Yeah, exactly. They're trying feels to copy like and that. paste. Mm-hmm. I mean, he only... From what I read, he only took this because they, like, doubled his fee because mm-hmm. they... Like, the wine scenes were basically in charge of wanting this movie done and, and trying to wrangle... Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson to make it again. And I mean, uh, I think Wes Craven was going to go into 
oh, there was a movie he was going to make that they were like, we'll double your fee if you do this. And he's like, mm, all right. This is after Music of the Heart. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, dramatic movie. With Meryl that, Streep. With Meryl Streep. Yeah. yeah. Music of the Heart. Yeah. It was For real, he directed that. 99 Violence. And yeah. Meryl Streep, that was his, I think, like Wes Craven trying to get out of the horror I together. I yeah. that fucking movie. It's like, I can yeah. do things. Gloria Stefan yeah. and NSYNC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Goddamn yep. right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He went and did this for he's, yeah. he's he's like I did it for double my money, but it also took twice as long. For so me he to make really didn't movie. make any more money yeah, because so it just, took twice as long. Wait, yeah. Why are we saying that it took twice as long to make this? Because the, the wine, wine scenes. Scenes. If there's ever an argument against studio notes in a movie, this this movie is Exhibit this A. Is, yeah, the wine um, scenes are known to they want to they mess with things, overstep their boundaries for yes, sure. They do. Um, they do not every leave movie their... that they did right, as Dimension Films, which yeah. is Bob Weinstein, I think is the main yeah. head of yeah. that studio, but. Like everything that you hear that Dimension Films had, you know, released went through some kind of weird, you know, uh, mm-hmm. experience where it barely got released. It was, yeah. you know, completely chopped up or cut, and you know, they did all these weird things to them. I like them as a distribution arm, but they need to keep the like creative forces out, especially or at least horror movies. That's where I know the most experience from. They need to like stay out of being like, nah, I don't like this. We need to do something different and all that. Like they need to this stay what, out yeah, of it. It's like if your name is Tarantino or Rodriguez, they left them alone. But Wes Craven, they fuck at this him. in two thousand five. They didn't trust Wes Craven to make a horror movie. Like, oh. the, <laughs> like that's that just says it all right there. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, this movie. So ninety percent of this movie was shot in two thousand three mm-hmm. with almost. An entirely different cast. Um, the people that were originally in this movie that were eventually cut include Ileana Douglas, Heather Langenkamp, Scott Foley, Omar Epps, Robert Forrester, James Brolin, Corey Feldman, and Mandy Moore. Let's Shut try and up. plug them into the role. All these people. And Skeet Ulrich. And Skeet Ulrich. Ulrich. Yeah. Uh, the Joshua Jackson part, I believe, is what he was supposed well, to be. Well, actually, the, the original story was supposed to be um, Christina Ricci, Jesse Eisenberg, and Skeet Ulrich were all three strangers that that car accident in the beginning brings them all together and mm-hmm. they all turn into werewolves. So, like, Jesse Eisenberg and Christina Ricci were never originally supposed to be brother and sister. Right. Um, Skeet Ulrich was like, this character's written like shit. I don't want to do it. And he dropped out. Then they just wrote his character entirely. It made Christina Ricci and Jesse Eisenberg brother and sister. Mm-hmm. And that's the movie we have so, now. Back then, in 2005, Skeet Ul- Ulrich was still under the impression that he could turn down roles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, like, yes. do yes, you think was. he was aware of his being typecast? Do you think, like, he was like, wait a second? Well, he had a TV again. show. Wasn't he like uh, Jericho? Mm. Did he do Jericho? I think he did. I think he did Jericho. What was the one where he was like the priest that could like heal people? Or I think something that was like... Jericho. Was that Jericho? I think it was Jericho. <laughs> Jericho. Fact check that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty so, sure. But uh, see, that's why I'm wondering. Was it he turned it down or it was because like, you know, because I mm-hmm. the story that I heard, I correct me if I'm wrong, was that it got something went wrong with the production so that they actually shut it down and went on hiatus for a bit. Mm -hmm. And when they were trying to come back, like a lot of the people, I think Skeet Mm Ulrich, number one, like there was a scheduling conflict with whatever the hell he was doing. And so he could not do it again. And so they're like, well, fuck it. Then we'll just like rewrite this and reshoot. I know that was the case with a lot of like Mandy Moore, especially that was the case with her is that like she had like she was Maya's character. That was Mandy yeah. Moore, and she had shot all of her scenes, and then they were like, well, we need to come back and shoot more, and she couldn't. But I know Skeet Ulrich, that might have been his reasoning for it, but he had said at one point in time he was not satisfied with the way his character was right. written. I think it's so somehow, it might be a combination of the thing. You I know. think it somehow turned into, at the end, it was very similar to the character he played in Scream, Yeah, and he didn't want to do that again. Mm. Right. It was Jericho, by the way. He, he was tired of being 90s teen horror boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. didn't want to do it <laughs> Between again. Between the craft and, like, the scr- yeah. and Scream, he was over it. Oh, so yeah. he would have been the villain of the movie. We probably. But, yeah. He probably would have been, like Holly was saying, Joshua Jackson's character, I yeah. imagine. I we know so. if they were going after the same kind of story arc, where it's like there's, a, I mean, the spoilers, uh, you know, if you haven't seen this movie, we're going to talk freely about it, obviously. But uh, the uh, idea that he's the werewolf magnet that, you know, everybody kind of revolves around they're in a car crash with him and he I, attacks them or he they're attacked by a werewolf that was following him or I think, i'm not clear on that but yeah i, I think, think it that, was like an outside werewolf attack those three right Has but maybe re- maybe revealed later that it's skeet that's yeah. it's him 
How much of the details of like what the movie was originally supposed to be? Not much. Not much. And that makes me suspicious, the fact that they won't say what the original movie was like. Like, yeah. like anything you look up, it's the same one paragraph describing it over and over again. Yeah. But, I they mean... They don't give any details about it. They give the, right. the troubles of what, that they reshot it, that these people were replaced, but mm-hmm. never what it was before it came up with this. And it was, a, right, it was originally supposed to be R-rated yeah. as well. And the R-rated, wine scenes were like, no, 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 no. Much <laughs> Which, I mean, come on, if you're going to make this movie Mm -hmm, with Wes Craven and Kevin Williams and what they've done before, and it's a werewolf movie, make it rated R. Well, yeah, and Mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, if they were trying to recreate that magic that Scream brought, it did not have that feel whatsoever. (laughs) Scream had had that that darkness to it. You know, it was was the teen... The, the teen movie, and it had its funny moments, but this was all teen movie funny moments. This was not... <laughs> it was dark. barely a horror movie. Yeah, this Wait, was not dark It was funny? Well, I mean, you know, did you I watch mean, Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. He's hilarious. Yeah. You know Probably what I mean. Probably the best part of this movie, by the way. Yeah. Like, he's the only one to me that fits the character he's supposed to be. Mm. He's goofy in that way. Mm-hmm. And I think he plays the character well in he this movie. He plays the Jesse Eisenberg character. He really in does. every movie you've ever <laughs> seen him in. But he does it well in this movie. In addition to, you know, cycling through actors and their, in their you know, hiatus and the Weinsteins interfering where they shouldn't be, they went through three different versions of creating the werewolves. So they yeah. originally hired Rick Baker, who is like mm-hmm. horror royalty. You know, it doesn't get any better than Rick Baker. Well, for, yeah. done, for, I mean, when you think werewolves, right? You think American Rick Baker. Werewolf. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And thank God he won the Oscar again oh, for God. the Wolfman. Fucking... Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. he did. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, so they, they did Rick Baker and, and apparently, the, you know, there are a few scenes where you can tell in this movie where they kept a little bit of the Rick Rick Baker footage in because it looks so much better than everything else. Wait, in this you're movie. saying that the so the primary parking garage, but the primary werewolf that we're looking at in the movie is not the no, Rick Baker. No, even though he's clearly credited at yep. the beginning of the movie, right. but most of his stuff was scrapped. Well, and we then, noticed at the end there was the credit for like additional werewolf effects, yep. and blah blah blah, created yep. by uh, Greg Nicotero and, and Howard Burger. Yeah. yeah, so B. Yep. So uh, they hired Rick Baker. Um, he did basically the entire movie, all the important scenes. Weinstein saw the the dailies and said. We don't like the way that looks. So they fired him. They hired K&B. They did all the practical effects. Weinstein saw the dailies and said, we don't like the way that looks. Fuck that. We're doing CGI. And as you guys could tell, the CGI was fucking terrible. Oh, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't intended to originally be a CGI. No, no. it was all practical originally. And yeah. that's why you get this awkward mix of practical and CGI in this movie. And like the practical, like the parking garage scene with Maya looks way better than anything else in the, yeah. until it starts running on top of the cars and CGI. Right. Yeah. You know, but like when you just see its feet and its eyes and its ears and the close-ups, yeah. it looks really good and you're like, oh shit, we're in for something awesome. And then it all goes to shit when it starts moving. Yeah. <laughs> looks good. I've never, uh, I'm not a fan of werewolf movies. I think I've said that before in this podcast. I don't I don't like them. I, they don't do anything for me. Whether you get full, uh, full makeup, um, practical stuff like in The Wolfman, or you get CGI stuff, it just the werewolf movies never worked for me because it never, it never looks real to me. No matter what, it never uh, looks real to me. The creature never looks. real? It always or? looks. I can. It almost feels. Uh, it always feels animatronic to me. Like I can see that it's it's something. It doesn't feel like it's a, um, a lifelike at all. I mean, it's, we're talking about a werewolf here, but it doesn't feel like it's an animal. Like it's a living, breathing thing. It always feels like. Plus, I mean, with the way this one especially, and I'm only going to use this as, as an example, but just the way they shoot this one, it's all the close-ups of everything because you can't, you know, show the full thing for whatever reason, but. Every time they show it, it's it's all close-ups of the practical stuff, and then the wide stuff is always CGI. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I hate the one in this one, but I just don't I, – I never – they're never believable to me. It always feels like somebody in a costume or something that was puppeteered. Never – it's never scary to me. It's it just – don't like them. Mm. I'm going to challenge that going. thought with some future freak show picks, I think. Right. I think we you, might you have some, it, some term- upcoming ones oh, that no. I'll challenge your I'll thought. I'm curious Nothing. because yeah. this has been a discussion at the freak show for quite some time. Colin uh, is an avid werewolf. Yeah, I, I love, love werewolf movies. Werewolf. I love werewolf. Me too. I love I werewolf not movies. Like yeah. so I, they do nothing. I mean, I mean, I'm is- all for a werewolf movie doing something for me, like <laughs> right. bring it on and surprise yeah. me and be like, yeah, yeah all right, good. Yeah. Nothing's done it so far. I'm, the closest thing is uh, you know, American Werewolf in London. To borrow from Colin, if I'm going to have a Noah's Ark of werewolf movies,
movies, this movie's not making it out. No. But you know, like, but you know, it's yeah, no. for you know, I don't like this because it's a werewolf movie. I like it because of the time period and the crazy people they got to sign on to this yeah. movie. That's, That's what a makes it arc, fun. By the way, yeah. it's just like, well, this is my arc of werewolf movies. Mm-hmm. Would you like to watch now? Mm-hmm. Well, they're going for the bipedal werewolf with yes. the uh, what do you call that? When the, uh, the 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 joints of the legs bend backwards. Yeah. Which it's, is it's, the, the, it's the arrival. 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 The first time you see it, right? When they yeah. first did that, the howling or whatever, mm-hmm. it was like, ooh, look at that, you know? But it's like, you know, I think that's, well, maybe that's a wrap up thing. The issues yeah, with save some it. of the movie, save it. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so, you know, we were talking earlier that it's like it's trying to be the, uh, or, you know, that it's re- tra- trying to capture like a feeling of Scream mm-hmm. because Scream had the idea that like we were going to bring back the whodunit to the slasher film yes. where this is like, okay, we're going to bring the whodunit to the werewolf movie, yeah. which has been done, you know, several times before. Mm-hmm. You should see The Beast Must Die. It's a great like B schlock fest with Peter Cushing where the movie stops. Of course it has Peter for Cushing. For a werewolf <laughs> break where it says like and now you in the audience must choose which one of these characters and the clock Ooh. counts down. Oh yeah. Okay, that I like. That's cool. I like that. I love giving yeah. to it. Otherwise That's fine. it's a shitty movie but they, put <laughs> they advertise. Oh, I like that. see this movie with the werewolf break. Mm, choose your own werewolf. Yeah, but that's what they're so it's like you know, I guess maybe I expected two things from this pairing of Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson. A, it's going to be the Scream of Werewolf movies, yes. meaning that, you know, Which like Scream was a, uh, the postmodern dissection of slasher movies, that it was going to be the postmodern dissection of, of werewolf, movie. werewolf no, movies and werewolf actually, cliches. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess I expected going into it, it was going to have some kind of, you know, the mystery of who yeah. is the werewolf. But it gets kind of taken to ridiculous proportions in this, right? Because there's mm-hmm. like four fucking werewolves and a werewolf dog running around yeah. by the end of this movie. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Also, it gets to a point at the end where um, I think they still expect you to be uh, there to be some mystery as to what's going on. But it's pretty much all explained to us. It's pretty transparent. Point. It's pretty yeah, transparent. It I'm is. just like, there's yeah. no, like, no, you're not done because... Joshua Jackson. You is, just set up the rules and then ignored them. <laughs> yeah, or the, I mean, they just blatantly said that Judy Greer got it from Joshua Jackson. They blatantly say this mm-hmm. at one point. So it's just like, no, if you kill her, then obviously you're not going to be fine. Because you didn't get it from her. You didn't get it from her. It's just like it follows. You know, it's yeah. like you gotta you gotta kill the person you got it from. It's, yeah. You know, and. And, but how far up does this tree of getting it from go? Because this is the major flaw with this movie. So you have to kill... <laughs> it's the, the one, like, one of the <laughs> major flaws with like, this movie. Yeah. So you have to kill the person you got it from, right? So yeah. Christina Ricci got it from Joshua Jackson. Uh-huh. But, but Jesse Eisenberg got it from... Joshua Jackson as well when he yeah. killed Shane and Elizabeth in yeah. the beginning. No, that wasn't. No, they that both was got Judy it Judy Greer as a werewolf. That was Judy Greer in the Shane beginning. Shane and Elizabeth because she. Oh, because, the because she was wanting to fuck Joshua Jackson. Okay, yes, so gotcha. The jealousy okay, thing. she's oh. taking out all the women who yeah. are around right. Joshua. Okay, Jackson. So, but, but okay, because she made them werewolves, you still have to kill the main one. It still doesn't make sense, even in that. It, yeah, it's still like how far does the tree go? Be, like the first werewolf right. in that series, exactly. Yeah. But then, by that logic, doesn't doesn't well, Jesse Eisenberg have to die for Zipper to not be a werewolf oh, anymore? Oh shit! Because <laughs> <laughs> Zipper the dog got it from Jesse Eisenberg, not Joshua shit. Jackson. So doesn't so that doesn't make any goddamn right. sense? No. <laughs> I think I think it's because uh, Joshua Jackson is a pure blood. He was born with it. Oh, that's true. Oh, he did say yeah. that. He was born with it. Okay. <laughs> I might be reading way too okay. deep. In- Bra- See, this is why I'm always here. Yes, there you go. Oh, Bravo. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Fill in the gaps, Holly. <laughs> Holly, please attention. You're damn right. I've seen a lot of Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you gotta go. keep track of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should make an infographic of like all the like werewolf transmissions <laughs> right, to, that- to make sense of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing, I guess you go to a werewolf movie. Okay, well, maybe me. I go to werewolf Mm. movies because the cool thing that you're going to see is the werewolf transformation. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Which in this movie. It's terrible. Where is it? Okay, Judy Greer. Judy Greer is the only right. one, and then but that's horrible. It looks horrible. Um, that's it looks CGI. like a PlayStation One game, right? It was. <laughs> I remember the first CGI werewolf thing I think that I saw was an American Werewolf in Paris, Ooh, which was yeah. like yeah, with that's bad CGI werewolves because yeah. that was like we could do CG, so now you can have the full beast like galloping around, which it turns out in hindsight is not a good. 
idea. The reason why I think like the older things work is because they didn't have something that you could shine a big bright light on yeah. and couldn't move around. So they had to shoot it in, you know, shadow yeah. or just a little bit here or there. And it just kind of, at least American Werewolf, it makes an impression mm. more than you're able to see mm-hmm. the thing. And it comes off as like this ferocious kind of beast. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like werewolf transformation effects. I mean, did they peak with like, I mean, like, I mean, when you guys look at, you know, the 80s stuff of, you know, the rubber, you know, whatever, elastic hands stretching, Mm -hmm. bones cracking, you know, doing all that. Mm -hmm. Does that still have the same kind of or does it have a better effect than all of the modern day stuff? Twilight. uh, You don't see any transformation in most of those. Well, they just kind of. But they it's pop like, into their sh- yeah. yeah. They pop feels, into their shape. Yeah, yeah. but it yeah. feels more real. At least it's something that is it's uh, moving. Whether it's yeah, I mean for stuff like that, I think you can feel it. Plus, also you know it's a real thing. Whether it was made to look like that, but it's a real thing. Like you could somebody on set could touch that and transform mm-hmm. it and move mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and shapes shift. But you it's want, something that's moving around. You want the Teen Wolf moment? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm still searching for it. Maybe this is my mission you, to find no, the wolf. So you the don't like either. the transformation in the Wolfman? Because I was impressed. Like, oh no, I no, I didn't say that. that. I said I I don't like werewolf movies. There are okay. elements of these movies that okay, I do no, appreciate yeah. and I do like. That is a, a very good transformation. Well, that's an awesome transformation. But uh, even though it looks if, painful, it's still covered yeah, in. Well, painful. yeah, because yeah. Rick Baker got hosed again. Right, he got hosed yeah. again. You know, but yeah. he gets covered yeah, in CGI. CGI. And, well, Poor Rick Baker. Yeah, but there has to be something to that, though. The, the studio executives. I mean, I know we're saying that they have the idiots, same problem I do. Right, yeah. it doesn't look real. Yeah, to them, they're like, that looks like foam latex, buddy. We're gonna have to cover that with CG. Yeah. But I think the CG that they used in uh, The Wolfman, which was five years after this, is more convincing. Yes. Five years after this. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and this movie wow. feels ancient, right? It like, does. Cursed it feels crazy dated. Like, it's well, so It's dated. a time capsule of the year 2000. They time-stamped right? it. Oh, the, the worst way they could have time-stamped this movie is, guys, what's our opening scene? We see Bowling for, bowling soup, for soup playing. Right, let's a- stop the bad mouthing of Bowling for Soup right there. <laughs> okay, when was the last time they put out a relevant song, Sean? I know. I'm not saying that. <laughs> like I'm just saying ten the ones years ago, they right? Did put out yeah. are really good. I'm just saying, there's no better way to timestamp than to pick a hot band of the time <laughs> no, to open on. your movie with. Like 1985, good song. <laughs> I'm trying to think. And of that came one. out. Hold on. <laughs> there was the what was the original one? And that song probably came out in what 2005, right? When this movie pro- came out, before yeah, that, I think. But they were at the Wait, peak. Which they, they were at yeah. peak. Yeah. Which band did Stacy's mom? That's that Fountains of Wayne. Wayne. Okay. Which yeah. is also a good album. Like that whole album is really good. But <laughs> I'm here to but, defend. But they're the so for- and the '90s. <laughs> but they're so forgettable. You can mix them up with Bowling for Soup. So, I know. You know. I always get them confused. I disagree. Yeah. I but confused. any, there's no better way <laughs> to timestamp a there. movie than you know. That'd be like a movie in the '90s having Smash Mouth open. You know, in the, the opening oh, God, scene. You know, yeah. that's what it, that's what it feels like. It's you know, like, like, like holy song. shit, Bowling for Soup. Though, by you know, the the soundtrack selections. It's like it just. Like the music, okay. There's a scene that takes place in uh, a, a nightclub, yes. Where Joshua da- Jackson has this o- fairly <laughs> shitty awesome Planet Hollywood. Yeah, it's it a is, shitty it's, Planet but Hollywood. But, it's like, but I would go. Right, you <laughs> but, but, yeah, okay, you would. but the but mannequins like look terrible. The mannequins look fucking awful. Like the props look so goddamn terrible. But it still looks club. expensive for a nightclub. But then again, we don't live in L.A. And I'm sure you people have this stuff all over the place. Sean, you uh, lived in L.A. I, mm-hmm. I did. Ripley's, believe it or not, the wax music. Museums. I've been to them all. Yeah. Well, I've been and how does Madame this compare? Desire how does Tinsel yeah. compare? I mean, it's basically Ripley's Believe It or Not, and, you know, yeah. Yeah. wax figures mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Which I've it's, been to those but places. I like those. those places are fun. They're fun, yeah. but I, again, I like those. I like that they're not like, they're kind of a little shitty, but they're, they're, yeah. it's cool stuff to look at. Like, I like seeing. But it's weird because, like, it kind of seems like at the beginning of this movie, this is just like a horror themed one. It, but then yeah. later on, it's like, it's there's, Char- and there's like Cher and, and like yeah. yeah. And there's Kevin Sorbo. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. It's like yeah. Madame Tussauds or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, but it starts off as like just a horror thing. They're like, look, yeah. the, the Cheney estate donated right. this cane, which no, they fucking didn't. That's not from that movie, but okay. No. You know, it's from <laughs> and, a Stephen King movie from the 90s. Yeah. But, you and know. And also, they, I mean, obviously, they, they put their little Wes Craven bits in there. Oh, all over. In the background. All over. The screen mask shows up. And that Iron Maiden that like he shows yeah. off, that's from the 60s Adams Family. The, the oh, yeah. That actually. 
actually is like Very the real true. one used on the show. But so. they had like a missed opportunity there, didn't they, with the music? Or, oh, I guess I'm making a bigger complaint about the music at large. I mean, it it's just, not memorable, so no, I don't like, think your complaint you know, is invalid. Uh, like wallpaper music or something. But they had an opportunity in the nightclub scene because I'm like, this could be like another Fright Night scene or something that they do. But they, you know, it was like the music was like thump, 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 thump. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. background. Yeah. It's not present enough. I no. don't know, you know, it's not catchy. It's, it's not like. all the money in Scott Baio. <laughs> I guess so. They paid little, Scott Baio way too much. Soul and little, and yeah. Collective Soul and little money in Marco Beltrami. And yes. that Lance Bass cameo. <laughs> of him what, what walking down the red movie? carpet and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what? All of these people were super popular in 2003 but this was and it was like expected the end it would of come it. Up. This was just like the next day. Well, this Nobody like, cared about like any of these tone people. Deaf, right? That's why the movie feels <sighs> yeah. 100 years old. It does. It really does. <laughs> it, yeah. It's because it's like tone deaf even for it's trying to be so hip to right now. Yeah. Except yeah. right now ended up being two it coming out right. 2 years yeah. later. Like, uh, yeah, I think there was at that point there was like a big cultural shift, and I think that's mm-hmm. why this feels older than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Probably, like we said, it's probably like right on the money for that exact time, but very soon after that, things this is, changed. This is, you put it in perspective. When this was made, I was a senior in high school. When it came out, I was twenty. I didn't give a <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. I did not true. give a shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a big yep. change. Yeah. You, you guys you remember when it. we watched Leprechaun and Jennifer Aniston was like, "This is the '90s," and we're like, "Don't say that." Yeah. Like that yeah. time. That's okay. That's this whole movie. This whole movie is saying this is the this is did the, she two, say the it was like two thousand sixties and then the nineties or something like that. What was her joke that was like not funny and way off? What in, in Leprechaun? Yeah. Oh, this is the '90s. Women can do whatever, or whatever. Is what yeah, it was. Some yeah, weird job. yeah, exactly. That but make sense. it's like it's uh, instead of being one scene, that's like this whole movie is like that. You know, yeah. this whole movie is constantly <laughs> stating what time period. Mm-hmm. But in the like, '90s, you had to realize. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, as Holly and I were trying to figure out what we were watching this movie, Maya was famous for what? Yeah, there was you know, a song. like I, all I came up with was Lady Marmalade. She was the fourth lady, but yeah, <laughs> but I knew Maya like when she was big at the time. I can't like, remember I knew, what for, yeah, but, I mean, but yeah, Maya. yeah, I knew of her, but I yeah. can't tell you what she sang. But other like than, we could, we could name the other three ladies. He's like without even thinking about it, Pink, it's Lil Kim, Christina, Pink, and Christina Aguilera, yeah. and then and I guess Maya. Guest appearance by Missy Elliott. Yeah, exactly. So you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but we cannot remember what Maya was doing. No, no idea. Is she, uh, flip it, reverse it. Was that? You yeah, right. No, Missy Elliott. No, that was Missy Elliott. That was Missy Elliott. Yeah. Right, yeah, I'm yep. confused. <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, no. I'm sorry. It was. Uh, no, I lost my train of thought too, and I was trying to interrupt. This should terrible. have been more '90s music centric. I think. Or yeah, early, well, no, early as it was like a centric. time capsule, where, like I- even in the uh, technology, right? It's like mm-hmm. you got your Nokia phones, you got your oh yeah, uh, all over IMAX from the you know yeah. Ooh, the color. It's in the computer Zoolander <laughs> yeah. IMAX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have uh, what looks like '90s oh, internet. Uh, you know, yeah. it's yeah, mm-hmm. just the whole thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So back in like. Before the times of the internet, like in movies, when people need to look up something, what was that like, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> it was a dark time. <laughs> we had to go to the like to the library. And, yeah. I was gonna say we'd see we get great scenes. Fifteen of character- miles <laughs> up hill both ways. If you were out somewhere and you wanted to know someone, you had to go to a payphone and call the library and ask them to look something up. <laughs> yeah. Now we have Google. Now we're calling the video source. Like, do you have Wayne's World two in? <laughs> <laughs> but in like older movies, you would see your character go to the library. Library, check out a book, flip through the book, and like have that like revelation by with, like looking at a page, like delivering the exact information they needed. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much less dramatic to see someone go to like Ask Jeeves or Alta Vista and like <laughs> yeah. and like scroll on Facebook or just like Animal Attack. Yeah, Google Show. Like it just it doesn't have the same yeah, effect right. watching someone did, Google like, it. That's the precipice they were on with this because they did both. Yeah, he does the internet search and he's also off getting books that he can look at yeah. diagrams and shit. And then draw shit on his hand. Because that was because he did time. not understand it until he drew it on his hand. It's like, oh look, that looks exactly like this picture, but I have to draw because the that pentagram. Was this time, I when I was in high school, it was like a rule when we did papers, we had to do so many sources that were actual books. Yes, you mm-hmm. could not so just use internet sources. sources. Internet. Like, you, yeah. you can only use two sources for internet and at least three sources yeah. for books. Yes. So it is completely it's dated. Right there, <laughs> it was written. A movie yeah. made right on like a time shift, yeah. and then it didn't release until after the time shift. Yeah, and that fucked everybody yeah. for this movie. Oh, that's well, great. how much of the original footage uh, still exists in this? Do you know? Um, I think it's around thirty yeah. percent. And the best way to check is watch the hair of the actors. 
You can <laughs> like at the end when it looks like a tell. wig. It's new footage. Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. A wig. Like his character was added or something like that. Is no, that what we're saying? No, no but like, his, his hair. Did you notice how much longer Jesse Eisenberg and Christina's Ricci hair was at like the last oh, third yeah. of the movie? Yeah. Because that was the promise. Yeah. trying to be like, shit, what did your wig look like two and, and a half years ago? They have had, like they were really off. Like, yeah, how way you, off. How do you they look were at way off. Like, Mm, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, but there wasn't a, like a two year gap in the filming of it, right? They said like the filming they broke stopped for a little for while. A they stopped while. for a little while. So yeah. Wes Craven was working on it for two and a half years yes. like, through the writing, mm-hmm. rewrites, yes. shooting, right. editing, but all that stuff. But I know, like specifically <clears throat> with uh, with Milo Ventimiglia, which we have not mentioned, is in this film. Oh, yeah. Who is fr- who? I imagine. Okay, so this movie started filming in two thousand three. It finished mm-hmm. by two thousand five. He was on Gilmore Girls from two thousand two to two thousand four. So like, I imagine in between Gilmore Girls, he was doing scenes for. This movie, yeah, but like I know some of those actors did come back to shoot second scenes, and he was one of them that yeah. shot scenes earlier. And sh- but his hair didn't fucking drastically change. He no. looked, he looked, he looked the most similar throughout the movie more Maybe than anyone probably. I you like he looked beautiful. No. Well, he well, he did, he did. But I mean, like, <laughs> but I mean, as we commented, it looks like he just walked off the WB set and his yeah. Jess, you well, know, Mariano get well, up. Think about Gilmore Girls. His hair didn't change. On the no, show. no, it didn't. So it was that baby really Bruce did. Springsteen. He get really up, did yeah. just keep his hair that way. Yeah. all the time. And the jean jacket. He had the jean jacket <laughs> in this movie too. So, how many years before? When was Heroes? Was that Heroes was like 2006? I think. Oh, okay. Oh, Let me right. fact check oh, yeah, myself, yeah. but I think. <clears throat> and but Gilmore Brown. Girls was before Heroes. And I know. Rosenbaum was in Smallville at the yes, time with his very bald head. So they had to put that Wait, are there two people oh, that played Lex Luthor, Luthor in this movie? There are <gasps> two people. <laughs> wow. <No. laughs> Guys, if you need to crush a game of six degrees of separation, this is your oh, movie to pick. Is, yeah, Lex it is. And yeah, there's two Lex 2006 is Heroes. Two yep. Lexes. Yeah. What? There it is. Yeah. Uh, there's also two oh, people that were in Arrested Development. You have Portia de Rossi, who plays the fortune teller in a very small part. And then you have Judy Greer, who was yeah. Kitty, the assistant in Arrested Development. Yeah. So but you said Milo Vince Miglia was always on, was always in this. They would yeah. recast him. They didn't yeah. recast him. So he did, good choice. So he did do, he did do some shooting with Mandy he, Moore then. Yeah. What are you Which is weird. Well, the, weird future predicting. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Very yep. True. Yeah. There's so many connections. There's so much synergy. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so much synergy in this movie. Uh, it made for good things down the road. Yeah. But when they yeah. were making this one. And so Nick Offerman, who plays a police officer he- for a short pun, <laughs> movie, was also on Gilmore Girls for two episodes. So yes, he was. There is so much symmetry in this movie, See, guys. Everything goes back to Keep Gilmore Girls, boat. apparently, yep. Colin. <laughs> 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 I've never seen yeah. it. I've never seen it. Yeah. It all comes back to Gilmore Sorry. Girls. Really Kayla and I just took over for yeah. a while. Yeah. <laughs> we're back now. <laughs> yeah. We're, hitting, yeah, we're just girls. hitting different yeah. Ver- yeah. versions of our audience tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Oh, well, no, this movie hits every quadrant. It basically does. Between all the people that are in Good it. Good and bad. Mm-hmm. Well, Nick Offerman was also Parks and Recreation. Mm-hmm. For all you yep. Yeah, yes, Parks fans. Very much fans. so. Anybody, anybody we're missing cast-wise? The dog? I mean, Zipper. 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 Played by and Solar. the girl Solar, yeah. with the midriff. Midriff girl. Ooh, there were a lot of midriffs Shannon, in this movie. Oh, oh um, Milo Ventimiglia's girlfriend, yeah. his uh, beard. Apparently never who went on she? to go Does do anything. Yeah, I was like, does anyone know who she is? No. I, I honestly tried to look her up in the credits, and I didn't ever hear what her name was in the movie, so I didn't know how to look her up. <laughs> no. Yeah. Huh. Um, Did we no. mention that Shannon, Shannon Elizabeth, Elizabeth was yeah, in the she movie? Gets, uh, for all of two seconds. Yeah. Christina Ricci, Joshua Jackson with Shannon Elizabeth on the cover of this DVD for Cursed. She gets yep. third Her billing. face is even on the front, too. It, it was is. a really odd opening scene that she was a part of because I figured, you know, again, the people who did uh, Scream would do the fake out. Here's Shannon Elizabeth, and we're going to kill her off, like, in the opening scene. Right. But it doesn't go that way. It's like that no, scene ends extended. abruptly after yeah. they get their uh, fortunes told. They kill her fairly quickly, but not That's right like away. That's like 15 minutes yeah. later. Because yeah. we have to set up like the day job of Christina Ricci, the, that Jesse Eisenberg's tormented in high school. A tornado 25-year-old high schooler. Yeah, yeah Joshua, no yeah. kidding. And Joshua Jackson setting up his uh, you know nightclub. Yeah. It's like all of that before we get reintroduced to Shannon Elizabeth in the car wreck. It was like, yeah. Good God. I wonder if it actually went, played that way mm-hmm. the first time around, or if they were trying to, or if she got killed off in the right. beginning by werewolf attack. Yeah, it felt like two different parts separated by a completely different movie at that point. Mm. And they bring the characters in for that. That was a weird one. 
Also, uh, Derek Mears is credited oh, as yeah, playing the werewolves. werewolves. And he, he's like modern horror royalty at this point. Like, this guy is any monster you need to play in a movie. Any tall, Basically, imposing predators. figure. Yeah. Yeah. Predators. Um, one of my favorite credits of his, not only was he Jason in the 2009 remake, and he was he was the classic Predator in Predators, he but he was Kick Puncher in Community. Oh, he, he was yeah. Kick Puncher! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh, Kick uh, Puncher! He, if you need a tall, imposing figure, Wait, wait, was Derek it Kick Mears. Puncher 2 Punch Kicker? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Kick puncher, two punch yep. kicker. That was, that's good. <laughs> so if you need a tall, imposing man, Derek <laughs> Mears is the, the guy. He said, "Yes, he yes, is. yeah." <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. So I, I wish he got more credit. I don't, I don't, do I wish he got more credit for this movie? No, I'm I mean, sure he was. he really in it? You know, he was like, like I'm a stunt man. Yeah. He was like Kane Hodder did beforehand. Yeah. yeah. That. That's how you end up as Jason. He was basically but, an Easter egg. <clears throat> was he just the feet on, next to the Hummer and that was it? Well, he was the actual in the werewolf suit. He's probably whenever the you saw that you know, he's the werewolf he that the, flips uh, off the camera. Yeah. Oh, yes, the werewolf middle and finger is that great. The werewolf gets Fucking insulted great. by uh, uh, Christina, Christina Ricci. Ricci calling out her bony she, ass, her fat, bony thighs, ass fat thighs and, thighs bad, and skin, bad skin and gets so angry that he, she flips off the camera. That and was that's, hilarious. That was uh, the best scene. So is this movie, are we supposed to read this as a comedy? No. No. No, it, like, no like they wanted. Saying, it's supposed to be Scream of supposed to Werewolves. Be scream with Werewolves. That's really, I'm sure, what they wanted. Or at least, I mean, that's what they were going into thinking, I'm sure. Because, I mean, even Wes Craven says the contract for this movie was a rated R movie. Like, they were trying to do yeah, that. Yeah, make a horror movie. Make a horror movie. But so would I, it have been better served if it was a comedy? The only reason I ask is, like, the whole grafting of the werewolf mythology onto. Yeah. I guess the idea that you know, we're going to do talking people kind of movie? yeah in like in Los Angeles like hmm. the idea of putting it's like what would happen if a werewolf went loose in Los Angeles and I suppose like this also you know gives Craven another attempt to you know do something that's Hollywood centric because yes. I mean that's you got a new nightmare scream three. Scream 3 and then this are his movies where, you know, it's like... His Hollywood trilogy. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like two of those movies. But, I mean, putting <laughs> a werewolf in Hollywood, it's like how... You know, I mean, it's one of those things that kind of uh, just... You know, you can't suspend your disbelief, or at least you, know, yeah. you have trouble with it. The idea that you're going to have, like, some kind of big hairy beast wandering around and no one's going to notice. Yeah. You know, there's, <laughs> I mean, suppose maybe it just fits in because it's like, oh, they're shooting a movie. Well, then there there's should a be a lot of naked around. people running around, but maybe there are in Hollywood, you know, like, in oh, there are. Do you, have you never been to Hollywood? There's just naked people most of the time. <laughs> Especially on the Rock of Fame. Naked people all over. Spider-Man is mostly naked. It's weird. What? Just walking around, like, <laughs> the Walk of Fame where you can, like, take pictures with everybody. Yeah. Spider-Man just walking around, dick out. Shut all up. over the place. Yeah. Are you making that up? Yes. <laughs> you could be and we went to Yeah. I am very much. I'm too drunk. I can't tell. (laughs) (laughs) No, nobody walks around naked in Hollywood. They do in Vegas. Uh, In Vegas, they do in Vegas. Yeah, you will see naked Spider-Man. I've seen him. (laughs) Right. Fat, pudgy, naked Spider-Man. How do we know half those people weren't werewolves the night before, and they're just on their way home? Don't. Oh, Oh. but in Hollywood, where it it seems like it would stand out more. (laughs) Yeah, I guess the other opportunity. If you. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> they really punctuate the like the name of the road that this car accident at the beginning of the movie that sets off oh. the events happened on. They keeps they say like four times in the movie, Mulholland Drive, mm-hmm. which you know, David Lynch movie. It's a very a famous, famous road. You know, it's a famous road. Yeah, exactly. I love that there's always like the remote part of Mulholland Drive, like Mulholland that no cars Drive ever like, drive down. Yeah, it's the yeah. darkest road. That it winds up the fucking. Hollywood. No, Mulholland is actually a very isolated road. It's a connecting road that'll get you two places. Yeah, it's actually usually very like. Very scenic because you can look Very, down over. That's the entire, yeah, that's where you can yeah. look down and see all of Los Angeles. But they name drop it because it's such a Los Angeles movie. It, like, right. you know, we're gonna go to the Capitol Records building. We're gonna go to Man's Chinese Theater. We're gonna you know yeah. drive and roll and drive. Yeah, yeah Kill the Show. show. Yeah, there's you like know. a montage of fucking you know Rodeo Drive and Hollywood Boulevard at the beginning mm-hmm. of this movie. You know all the. Cut scenes of the oh, neon yeah, signage and yeah, shit yeah, yeah, at the yeah. very beginning, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but that's I, where like some of the like in jokiness of stuff. It's like, well, what was it? Uh, Judy Greer kicks, I think, Christina Ricci, or something, and says like, "Fair fight." You know, this is Hollywood, you know, or whatever. And it's oh. like too yeah. literal. Yeah, yeah. talking I mean, about the <laughs> script of this movie, yeah. how horrible it is. Yeah, yeah. How, Kevin how, Williamson, how, what were you doing, man? I don't know, and how unnatural any of the dialogue in this stilted movie is. As fuck. It's so stilted, unnatural. People don't talk like this. Mm-hmm. No. It is. I don't know if it was like does uh, comparatively to like 
Dawson's Creek and earlier stuff? Do they talk like this? No, no. no. Dawson's Creek is crazy, natural, but yet really wordy. Like it's really big, it weird. It feels like it's on a like higher Oxford level. Oxford but... Dictionary yeah. words, but it, it feels really natural. It yeah. And this feel movie in this feels movie dumbed down to it's shit. All, like, yeah. attitudes yeah. and stupid yeah. shit, and just like I love you. Maybe we can make it work, and all this. I'm just like, oh Jesus, is it's that, horrible. But is it trying to be like a satire of the you know Los Angeles? Oh, for sure. You know, it's trying to be like you have to become someone else to be make it here is like those is like the super literal statement of this movie it is it's lost. i think it's lost on we can identify it sure maybe but i think it's lost on general audiences are going to see this movie like if that is what they're trying to do because there's no i don't think there's any like pointed moments that identify that that is what they're trying to do Mm, i don't think that comes across you have to be in on the joke to know that it was a joke right right? but i don't right right. and there's no part in what is the finished movie that kind of leads us to believe that that is the intent of what they're doing. Yeah. There's no moment to me that says, right. hey, uh-huh, throwing the elbow at you, come on, you get it, right? Did I didn't Ke- get that. Did Kevin Williamson write Disturbing Behavior? Is that his? Mm-hmm. Let's ask the internet. <laughs> it seems like that was another one. Well, I remember. I, like it. I see only, you might be right. The only reason I bring that up is because I remember, like, in that movie, and, you know, there was a distinct, like, slang and stuff that, like, mm-hmm. the teen characters used. Mm-hmm. This is kind of what I think he became known for in Dawson's Creek. It was yeah. like he could zero in on the, the type of, you know, like, conversations that actual teens would have. And Don't believe so. Authentic. It wasn't right. by him. Don't know. Well, I was I mean, just looking at. Uh, see, well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I know what you're saying. It's but definitely I, inspired but it's by the, Kevin. It's Williams of that era. Probably. Yeah, definitely yeah. inspired by Scott Kevin. Rosenberg. I don't, I don't know who that is. I, I know what you're saying, but uh, that doesn't really apply to Dawson's Creek because no teenagers talk like that. Well, oh, right, true. exactly. It's very, yeah. it's very heightened yeah. how they speak. Yeah, Dawson's but Creek, no one speaks like that. See, I never watched the show, but uh, maybe this is my understanding was that yeah. it would it somehow captured, like, you know, uh, Maybe the intent of teenage conversation is a highly it, it got the angst for sure. Yeah, like yeah. The, there's the, so much angst. There. Yeah, the mm-hmm. topic of conversation, but the way they express themselves was way beyond high school. Yeah. Well, like, I guess way the, I honestly kind of thought Jesse Eisenberg was in college for a lot of this movie because, like, the campus even looked five years old. Like, well, the yeah. campus even looked like a, it could have been a college campus. Like, mm-hmm. like we saw one shot of the campus and enough to know that it was the Buffy school and it was the nine hundred two and L school. Oh, yeah. Yes. But like there was nothing to tell us that it was high school. No. Like, yeah. I mean, we live in you know the fucking Midwest, so right. all of but our California, schools are but indoors. High schools are, are outdoors, high school. right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's Everyone's foreign to us, kind of, so we don't yeah. know that. So it you know, just looks weird. Yeah. It's like, yeah, seems like a college campus. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, wait, what? How old yeah. is he? Outdoor <laughs> He's twenty. Yeah. Fantastic, you people. Well, the, we the lockers were outside too. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what happens. That's foreign to us. We don't. We don't understand that. It rains. It doesn't. Yeah, and it snows. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Mm, sure does. It's cold. But yeah, you were saying, I mean, about the dialogue then, that it, here it's like so, like, you know, ham-fisted, or not ham-fisted, what were we saying? It's uh, Overly just, dramatic, like... And it, it's, but it seems disingenuous, people don't yeah. talk that way, so it's like, how did, I want to know who came, like, was this Kevin Smith's, or Kevin Smith, <laughs> Kevin Williamson's original idea, or was... You know, it pitched to like, hey, you should write like a were- a Hollywood werewolf movie and you'll put like a little bit of Hollywood satire on it. And, you know, then somebody said this is a good idea and he just like cranked it out. Or did he like actually, you know, have like I've always wanted to do the Hollywood werewolf. You know, the one thing that they haven't done. We should have watched I, the making of because I don't know. Yeah, there's what a making th- of on the features, which we were yeah. like, what? What? What is this? The Weinsteins just like cutting footage for hours? Like, yeah, like you know? I wonder what watching the behind the scenes, if they were to be like, yeah, everything's fine. We're making a horror movie. This is what happens and everything. If they were like trying to hide what the, the shit that right. was going on. If it was like maybe major stuff shot before like the big switcheroo later on. But I don't, there's not a lot of Kevin Williamson talking about this movie. I mean, I've looked right. for articles and like retrospectives Nothing. and they don't talk about this movie it is like they made it Wes Craven says like yeah I'm not happy with the end result and I just forget about it Kevin Williamson doesn't say a word about this movie and Ju- Judy Greer said as recently as like 2014 yeah. like I don't know what happened with that movie yeah. she said the movie I read for the movie I performed it was a great movie the end result was something fun. completely different than what I thought it was going to be yeah. you know so like even people in it were like what the fuck happened but I think Kevin Williamson originally probably wrote a pretty decent 
movie. Probably. And then the wine scene just beat the shit out of it till there was something left of it is what yeah. I think probably happened because who knows how many rewrites this movie went through before we actually got the final product, you yeah. know? And if stuff it, just done on yeah. set without him at that right. point. Like, because I don't think nobody else is. That's when Aaron Kruger came in and did mm-hmm. those rewrites? No, nah, I mean, he's only got, he's got the written by and there's nobody else listed. So if they did some so rewriting, it's. less than it's, the 20%. If yeah, it's mm-hmm. less than whatever. It mm-hmm. had to have been for just reshoots and shit. But, but even what he wrote, who, like, if they re- reshot around what he wrote, it doesn't really matter. You know, if he wrote this amazing script and they scrapped. You know, they shot 90% of the film and then tossed most of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Who knows what... Well, that's extensive. You know? Do you know what the final budget was? I mean, like, how much, you know, does this movie Oh, cost? this movie was $38 million. Million? Dollars. Yeah. That's a pretty big budget movie in 2005. You know like, made? that's... Twenty nine million. Uh, well, yeah, domestic, yeah. but I mean, it probably made something. But I'm st- still bomb. It didn't. Right? It did not. Yeah. It was not financially successful. No, no <laughs> not in any regard. No. Well, it reminds me, like one of the only other. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that there have been several stories like that in Hollywood history. But I also heard the. Uh, story of the exorcist four the exorcist the beginning was another movie where they shot like an entire movie with paul schrader and then fired him and then reshot the entire movie that was 20th century fox i think but like how you know you wonder how much of this stuff happens on lower profile stuff that you don't hear the Mm -hmm. stories about it but when you do when you have like you know somebody like wes craven that's going to get out through yeah, you know, right. the genre press deal. or whatever. Yeah. You know, if you're doing an exorcist movie, it's going to come out that, you know, we fired this dude and hired Reddy Har- Harlan to read. <laughs> <that movie>. Yeah. <clears throat> right. That's Harlan. when you know you're in trouble. If you have like, why well, you wonder, right? Like you hear these other movies, you know, famously there's been stuff that's gone through, you know, heavy reshoots. Mm-hmm. And then when you see the finished product, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't notice there was anything wrong yeah. with it. I mean, like World War Z was another one where I yeah. think they scrapped a third of that movie. Yeah. And Suicide reshot squad? it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suicide Squad. They scrapped yeah. like what? More than half of that movie, right? Uh, but then, I don't know how you know, much, like, in, they... I guess here's my point. Even this, like, to, you know, we know that there was something up with it. But. I mean, did you honestly feel that it was a patchwork movie while you were watching it? I feel like it was the movie. It was not the movie I was told I was going to get. That's what I feel like. Right. But I didn't. I would agree with that. But it also I would say, no, it didn't. It didn't feel like the small things you would find in a movie where you have problems with. But the the storyline seems I don't want to say cohesive because it, it doesn't feel like it with like the loopholes and what um, I mean, who was the main werewolf and what what have you. But it doesn't feel like big chunks are missing and other chunks are inserted. Like it does feel like it is one thing from front to back or from start to finish, which is weird. But there is something wrong about this movie. But it doesn't feel patchwork. Yeah, it feels completed. It yes. just doesn't feel the tone is off. Yeah, something. Yeah, something yeah. is weird. But I wonder if that's just the, you know, <clears throat> that almost feels in some way that it was putting the wrong, um, like, sensibility being Wes Craven mm-hmm. with this material where a straight up comedy version might have been more successful because mm-hmm. it seems like you got the cast for it. You're just your tone. You're trying to make it serious. Mm -hmm. But it's not working as a serious movie because it's so fucking goofy. Like, everything about it is just goofy. And then they top Mm -hmm. it off with a fucking, you know, werewolf flipping off. You know, (laughs) like, that's like, okay, that's from the movie that this wanted to be. Sure, and maybe should have been, like you're saying. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Especially, like, every male character in this movie is fucking, is a creep. Like, Mm -hmm. Michael Rosenbaum, just the way he talks for most of the movie. He sexually harasses her for 90% of this movie. (laughs) And at the end, he's just like, we don't have time for this. There's an animal running around. We need to go. Like, what is he? What, like, because you're supposed to think got, he's a red herring. Maybe I get that, but he's just werewolf. fucking it's e- weird. Every guy except for Jesse Eisenberg is predatory in this movie. Yeah. Like, like, and I think Joshua I, Jackson I, I, I is creeping on her, you know? That because yeah. you're trying to figure out a, right. which one is the predatory fucking right. werewolf, mm-hmm. but it just it comes off really weird for these characters. Like, it's not a natural 
thing for people to act like that, mm-hmm. whether they are a werewolf or not. Like fucking Joshua Jackson running up to the window, just being creepy, like, "Hey, I need to talk to you." Right. Like, hey, the guy doesn't knock. He just like shows up in your house. Yeah. He yeah. shows up at your yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't knock. You left the window open and the door wide open, yeah, and just yeah. walking. Who the fuck are these people? Well, he was the biggest. Like maybe that scene at the end, which I'm sure that that was redone several times. Right, the ending of the movie because yeah. I think yeah. You know, but his character there doesn't match his character from like the rest of the movie. Yes, because he comes in the door saying, "You know, Christina Ricci, I love you." And by the end yeah, of it, where the fuck does that come from? <laughs> that's out of that's the stupidest out of nowhere. Like I get they're in a relationship and everything, but it's are they? They it's never not, spend any time with like each other. It. They it's keep disingenuous. Running. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this? He keeps it's blowing like, her I, off through the whole movie. Yeah. He's yeah, blowing her off. She blows yeah. him off what? and yeah. he blows her off. And it's like, what the fuck do these people actually Because ever... it's Hollywood, Colin, and they don't have time for each other. That's very Exactly. True. That's there why everybody gets divorced. Because they don't have time yep. for That is true. That's actually the most real part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. That's why the relationship seems so awesome. Because they're always like, uh, you know, never... <laughs> they're never, that heightened, they're, right, they're never uh, together uh, long before, enough yeah. to start yeah. I want to spend more time with you. They have keep problems on having with. to run off to go to yeah, yeah. something else. Yeah. It's that George Costanza <laughs> thing. You always leave while you're on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Seinfeld. <laughs> we did it. We did it, guys. <laughs> we, we got there. We got we there. All corners <laughs> tonight. <laughs> we are right. there. Now I just got to bring up funny games somehow and we'll oh, full circle. Right. There we go. Uh, well, uh, uh, How many weeks in a row are we now? Yeah, I think it was four, five. I think four. One of them got deleted when the show crashed. Uh, yeah, yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> so, um, oh, the other thing I hate about werewolf movies, I just thought of this. You know what it is? The fucking physics of the people in the movie. But they crawl on the ceiling. Werewolves and, shit? and the people with these superpowers. I hate everything where everyone's just light as a feather. There's no weight to anybody in these movies. Like, I get that they're agile and they're strong and they can do all this shit, but there's no weight to anybody. Everybody's just scurrying around the ceilings. Werewolves are just easily jumping from car to car. I hate the physics of this movie. Do other monsters bother you as much? Because, like, like vampires? Mm, Dark Man had some crazy powers that made no sense. Yeah, yeah but it doesn't. But if most of that was. Sh- I mean, I think all of that was shot with like real people doing things, though. Like, it's just it feels yeah, like everything's blown out of the fucking house or whatever. In the that should have killed him. Yeah, I yeah. Well, but, but, but even that, like the physics yeah. of that, don't stack up. But maybe it's just I visually think it's most, satisfying. I think it's mostly to do with CGI and the weight <clears throat> of things. Because I, that's well, that's the biggest problem. problem with CGI stuff, right? That's right. Like, and I think that that's probably my biggest thing is that CGI has no weight. Yeah. And that's a big thing that bothers me because it's just another thing I can identify as like that's not real. Why am I invested in that monster, this character? If it's I can obviously tell it's not real. It doesn't look real. It has no weight to the character. It doesn't like it pulls me out of it real quick. Mm. That's the other thing I hate. Or when like um because there's some wire foo later on when these um these uh these cursed people. How many times does this say cursed in this a movie? Lot. Of the movie called Cursed. Too Hello? much. Thank you, Jesse Eisenberg. How many times do they say alien in the movie Alien? Oh, okay, go. Uh, not much. These aliens, uh, man, they're coming from... Okay. That doesn't happen at all. <laughs> in the movie Alien. <laughs> we gotta get away from these aliens. But no, but if there's like... You can tell... I know these people are on wires because there's no weight to what they're doing. Like, they're just like suddenly on the ground and then back up on their feet. Or they're crawling across the ceiling. Or they kick someone and they go flying 50 well, feet later on. Well, that's the cliche Ugh. of these type of movies that yeah. you would have expected a smarter film filmmakers to poke holes to, right identify yeah. and then put it on do its you, head somehow do you do you get offended by weightlessness in other movies like you know like crouching tiger and shit that's different okay because that is a it's foreign is a stylistic thing that they that do specific like, genre that genre this is what it was established as them doing that you know what i mean like this is what they do for those but there's still no reason for it. Yeah. But it's but that's but that's a heightened. It's I don't know. It's hard to explain what the difference is. And I know there. Uh, do you know what I'm saying though? Like I, I know you're I, asking I, I the question. No, I'm not trying to argue there. I was I know. Just actually curious. But I, I get what you're saying. I don't. But I also don't watch those movies. Like hit Crouching Tiger, Hidden. Okay, that's, like, fair. that's, that's fair. That's I, I don't watch those because I'm like I have no interest in people hopping from treetops. I love them. Right. I, I I have no interest in that's watching great. that, so I just skip that. So anything that would involve that, I probably wouldn't watch. Okay. So that instead of not liking it, I just don't see it. So that's probably where that goes. But yeah, I do have that problem with just like why, unless it's like a mystical world where that Mm -hmm. can conceivably, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, happen, which I'm fine with. But in things like this, I mean, you know, there's still like 
they're still objects in a mm-hmm. quote unquote real world. Yeah. Just have some weight to them. Yeah. All Stop right. staring at me, everybody. <laughs> God damn it. Well, this uh, logic is sound. Do we uh, do we have anything left to stray observations about Curse before we uh, check the mail and come up to our wrap ups? Yeah, so they, they mentioned they name check Scott Bayo a lot. And Scott Bayo was in this movie <laughs> He's a lot. So much in but- this movie. It, like th- probably the the worst name check than Scott Bayo that is mentioned in the same breath as him is is when they're talking to Craig Kilborn about the lineup for the show. Uh, they say <laughs> I bump I bumped Bayo for Carrot Top. I'm gonna let the top go long. <laughs> I'm gonna let the top go long. That's a great line. That um, was funny. And you know that this movie is made in 2003 to 2005 because no one gives a shit about Carrot Top anymore. No. And let alone to let him go long on his segment. Mm. No one long. would let him. No. No, if he was on a late night show now, people would be like, "But he's been playing Stop that. Vegas for like twenty years. That's like very he's true. still playing." But that Vegas. means you're put out to pasture. If you're if you're doing residency in Vegas, that means your career's over. Not, like um, that. Britney Spears is out there. She's doing do pretty good. Yeah, exhibit A. Uh, exhibit A. Yeah, she's doing pretty good. Yeah. So is Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, the Backstreet uh, Boys. You know, they're all put out to pasture. No, I, I think they Britney's take that. Doing pretty good. I think they take the Vegas residency in lieu of "I Love the '90s" tours. Yes. Yeah. Or, or be being on the VH1 that. I Love the 90s Maybe show. Yeah. <laughs> does she? Yeah. yeah. Does she? She does. Like nah. what? She just did one with, what's her name? But she's not touring. That's the thing. She's, she doesn't have she, to. I don't I think she can't. I don't think she can. Yeah. To take the like, truth. I think you're in denial about it. Yeah. I think you're in denial about Vegas. it. I don't think she can tour anymore. Doing I don't a think Ve- she yeah. get enough people to go to those tours. Doing a Vegas she residency out, means I'm at the end of my run. Yeah. It's in Vegas. That's the difference, though. Like, people, there's it's a nostalgia. Location. Like, I don't think she could. And plus, you know how many people are in Vegas? Like, the odds are in her favor for people to just go to that show. There's right. going to be throwing beer bottles here in a minute. We got to stop. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> she wouldn't survive touring. And yeah. I guess that's our final point on Cursed. I disagree. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's there. It is. I saw Carrot Top once. I, I would not recommend it. <laughs> was it when he was jacked? I, okay. I saw him when I was ten years old. So at the height of his popularity, probably. I've seen a few Carrot Top movies. I was not old enough to see him when I saw him. It was definitely inappropriate for a ten-year-old to watch yeah. when I saw probably. it. My parents were bad parents at that mm-hmm. point in their life. But prop comedians, gotta prop love it. humor. I hate prop. Humor. It's so terrible. <laughs> God, I remember being ten, being like, "This isn't funny." So you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was never funny. yeah exactly. Oh, no, no, yeah. no funny. not funny. Yep. Yeah. Oh, all right. we all agree on that. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the fact, likes top. so the fact that Craig Kilborn would let him go, let him go let long, him go. He killed him makes ass. no sense. <laughs> the Kilborn never would have done. That's that. probably the most illogical thing about this movie is that someone would like Carrot Top take on his set too long, right? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Out of everything that happened in this movie, yeah. I agree. All right, so let's summon our male demon, Igor. Where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. All right, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Igor would fit like right in at the tinsel. Uh, he exhibit. would love that place. Like, don't you think? Be an installation. That's the other thing. Like I, all the wax figures. I was hoping they'd pull like a basketball, and there would just be like, yeah. real people hanging out. That'd be great. Like punching a clock, and then just hanging out as wax figures. <laughs> That's what I really wanted. I thought that would have been fun. Do you think he would fall for Joshua Jackson's werewolf charms, Igor? <laughs> Maybe he may have like sauntered over to there was a Frankenstein in there and just hung yeah. out with him and the Wolfman. That's where I kind of figured. I think yeah. that's yeah. where he yeah. would yeah. hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. master. But he wouldn't like look at them because those are his heroes. So Playing around. Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah. 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 He'd, he'd feel at home. Yeah, yeah. He'd, yeah. He'd do. He'd do all right in there. All right, but if you want to get a hold of us, and we hope that you do, write into us. Let us know what you think about Cursed. If we're on the money, off the money. If you like this episode or anything else that we do, and please like us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you found and us. If you have an opinion on Britney Spears, please. Yes. Yes. that helps. Yeah, you know, like yeah. give us the like star it. rating yeah. or whatever. We're hitting we'll, all cauldrons. Tonight. Yeah, uh, but you can find us on uh, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And tonight about the movie Curse. Jonathan Holt writes in and says... That's a new name. I've always had a soft spot for this movie. Morning. Also, Werewolf Middle Finger. <laughs> it's, it's the best part. It's the yeah. most memorable part of the movie, <laughs> probably. Yeah. He says he's looking forward to this week's episode. Uh, movie Guru of the Movie Guru podcast. Oh, oh. wow. Another podcast. A friend right podcast. Oh. And he says, we hope... Oh, he says, uh, this movie's a super fail. There needs Ooh. to be more werewolf movies, 
and not hear lollipop sugarcane crossover flicks. I'm assuming there's some autocorrect going on there. Not yeah. these lollipop sugarcane. I don't know what that I don't means. Know. We're very curious. Please explain. Yes, elaborate. I disagree with your more werewolf movies thing, though. I don't. I agree with that. Nah. <laughs> and Victor T writes in and says it was trash. Oh, oh. it was Victor. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Uh, about me, man. <laughs> uh, Ghost in the Shell, a past episode that we did. Chris Huddleston writes in and he says, regarding Ghost in the Shell, I saw the live action version last night. Ooh. Honestly, it's pretty good. Better than I expected. It's been years since I saw the anime, but to my eyes, they did a remarkable job translating the look to live action and making the story coherent. Right. Well, Sea Huds, um, you are one of the only people that you may, saw it yeah, opening weekend because it debuted at third place yeah, it's opening weekend like 20 at million or yeah like 20 that? million Ooh. for a 150 million dollar movie Ooh. is not good no Plus, so that doesn't mean it's Plus a bad advertising. movie ah, right, so i heard that it was um, bad it means movie. that it'll probably fail financially oh they're saying they're it's taking a 60 like a 60 million, million dollar right, right now yeah, yeah. there's a variety today yep. So it's not looking good. If you don't open it number one, your opening weekend, you're probably not going to make your money back. I've liked you know? movies so. that have bombed before. I mean, we yeah. all like movies that have bombed yeah, before. But, yeah, sure. I mean, but I mean, this one's not like, movies well, are a lot more expensive now than they were 10, true. 15 years ago. It's you know? good that it lowers your expectation because you're like, ooh, it sucked financially and the reviews not you know, so good. Then you good. go in and you're then like, you see it and you're like, well, it wasn't that bad. Not right. For all that hate. You'd right. Yeah. But it wasn't. That. But that's the point that it doesn't. But they don't make it to be liked. To draw you in to see in the theater. Yeah. Oh, right. And that's yeah. where it yeah. They don't make it to be liked. They make it to make money. Yeah, so if it doesn't make money, true. it's a fail, you know? Uh, you might have seen it if you didn't see the Ghost in the Shell anime the week before. There's a, there's a new one coming, right? I heard about that. Yep. Yeah. Is there? Yeah, of this week they announced there's going to be a new one. <gasps> yeah, of course. A new anime, not a new live action. No. So. No, we'll never see a sequel to that one. Unless Cal- until Colin <laughs> no. picks it again. No, oh, Jesus, 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 please damn it, no. don't. No, yeah. please no. We did that <laughs> three times, Colin. Yeah, three fucking times. <laughs> Sorry about that episode, by the way. Uh, so that brings is. us uh, time for our wrap up. So we'll go around the table, and each one of us will tell you what we really thought of Cursed. Colin. Yes, what do you Sean. think of Cursed? Oh, um, do you have an opinion on Cursed? You know, I was thinking like the whole way through this movie, I. I it's a it's a movie of missed opportunities because of the talent involved. Um, I mean, I don't know. I've never really been a big fan of Kevin Williamson stuff, to be honest with you. I mean, like you know, being that you know, it's mostly been Dawson's Creek, Vampire Diaries, and what have you. I liked when the he following? first. That was his too, wasn't it? And yeah, it was. yeah. I never watched it either. But when he first debuted, it was like the savior of the horror genre, and he got off to a good start with Scream and got paired up with you know horror legend Wes Craven. Who, you know, at that point, I'm like, what was he doing around the mid 90s? Like, you know, I think he'd come off of uh, Nightmare, Al- the new, new Nightmare, Nightmare yeah. Uh, which was a good movie, you know. Yeah, very good. So, movie. okay. His career was not like in the pits, but. No. Uh, oh, no, no. Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> He's only done one werewolf and one vampire movie, Anywhere Cursed and Vampire in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's it. Well, so for him, it was like, okay, I get to do, you know, I'm a horror guy and I get to do like the. Uh, you There's know. your horror comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which one's worse? Vampire, Vampire in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's I haven't seen Vampire worse. in Brooklyn in a long time. I'm biased. I remember it just not it's bad, my fancy. Like, I was also 15. Upward, but... where this one fails downward to like, you know, like it's boring. <laughs> the other yeah. one's like. So bad, it's but it's me. No, yeah. it's boring too. Okay, so they're not very good. <laughs> this is it's like I think Wes Craven. You know, it's like even though we venerate the man because he's got so many, you know, those moments where he hit, he hit big. But he also yeah. has like the Deadly Friends. You know? I heard this is yeah. Somebody mentioned this earlier oh, today in an awful. article. I heard it's bad. Yeah, I I mean, what's it about? Uh, he's about got there's a kid who's he dabbles in robotics. And his neighbor, that he's, it's Christy Swanson. Oh. That he's oh, sweet of course. On, that she dies. <laughs> Classic 80s actress, Christy she Swanson. Dies? Her uh, abusive father kills her. <sighs> so he takes the robot brain, puts it in Christy Swanson, and turns her into a killer robot. He girl. takes the robot brain and puts it into her rather than taking her brain and putting it into the robot? Correct. Who is Christy so Swanson's agent in the 80s? Yeah. I guess you want to keep the Christy Swanson <laughs> yeah. body, is what you yes, want in that. that is okay, what like Mannequin, too. Yes. Well, yes. But the movie is the saving grace of that movie is probably a scene that you have seen uh, in uh, in gift form where uh, she takes a basketball 
and throws it at the head of yep. the old lady from uh, Throw it. Mama from the train, and like, <laughs> the head explodes. Oh, on wonderful! Def- yeah, that was pretty. I good. love that old lady. Yeah, it was sultry. Oh, she was in uh, the Goonies too. Yeah, yeah she was. Yeah. yeah, Throw Mama from the train. That's Nobody's I, seen that. Movie. I've seen that movie. <laughs> All right, so. I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but there's a missed opportunity in dealing with the werewolf mythology. Also, it's like there's really nothing in this movie that you haven't seen done before you know uh the car crash and you know the the werewolf attacking the people you know and then uh, him waking up in the bushes that's american werewolf or her you know finding her like you know uh sexual allure was done so much better in a movie 2000 i think 2000 ginger snaps yeah Yeah. ginger snaps that was uh before the wolf man that was my favorite i think werewolf movie you know of, of not of all time but of right. recent vintage. That was a, yeah. mm-hmm. that was a Ka- good one. You a know? young Catherine Isabel in that movie, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And Emily Perkins, oh. star of mm-hmm. the original mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. which I'm only bringing up because that's relevant. Again, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this movie uh, just seemed to... I wouldn't say that it stalls out. It keeps moving, mm. you know, but there's... I can't... I can't, there was no point where I could cross over the suspension of disbelief. There's no horror in this horror movie. No. Um, you know, they try for these kind of jump scares that are, just fall flat on their face, which makes you wonder, like, you know, it's like, is it too brightly lit? Craven doesn't know how to stage a, you know, scare scene. There's a scene at the beginning, right, for illustration is how off or tone deaf this is, where Christina Ricci, who has just come home from being attacked in by a werewolf, right, a beast out in the woods, Myth. comes home, locks up her house, hears a noise, wanders around the house. It's one of those slow, you know, the camera's following her around. There's sounds against the window panes and against the back door, and you're like, who am I supposed to think that she's afraid of? Here? Yeah. Is she afraid of right. a stalker? Because this isn't a slasher movie. She was attacked by a werewolf. Is right. the werewolf now come sneaky? back to her and somehow is it a snuck sneaky into werewolf? the fucking house? It's like exactly. what is happening? You know. So those moments where the whole movie kind of seems off like that. It's like yeah. I think it would have been better if they would have made a comedy. I wouldn't have seen it. But I think <laughs> it probably would have suited just the general concept know, of the Craven movie. Was Craven Kevin Williamson made a comedy werewolf movie? You would have seen it. I, uh, that's I, true. You probably would have I'd seen be it. first in line for that movie. Yeah, I, would have seen it. <laughs> I saw a Vampire in Brooklyn. I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I would have come right. away disappointed, probably like I did Maybe. when I saw the movie. Thank God I didn't see this in the theater. So um, mm. I can't recommend it. I mean, the only reason that you would watch this movie. It seems like it is a movie that was made for TV for the WB and somehow Christina Ricci wandered into it. Yeah. But it seems like a WB horror movie from like 2005. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Uh, and the only reason I think that you would watch it is because a, it's on Wes Craven's filmography and uh, B there's the story about, you know, how, fucked up the production of it went and so you're you know they're kind of yeah. looking at great movie disasters but it's not that big of a disaster the no. final movie actually does fit together yeah it's just not good, good. Not just not in- <laughs> yes yeah not good. so that's that's me yeah. sean what did you think it's just not Cursed. good it's not interesting it feels like i mean they really i'm sure they started out wanting to make like we've been saying the whole time scream but with werewolves I think they forgot at some point that there were supposed to be werewolves in this movie because a we don't get a lot of them, and b it feels like they're still making it like a, a, a you know a, a killer stalking people movie, like you said, especially with the example of like who is she hiding from? Like that's you know it's a werewolf running around. Also, it's a PG thirteen movie. Like I know Wes Craven signed on for an R rated movie. This movie should have been rated R. I think it would have made it. I, I, we can only wonder what they would have made had they just been left alone to make their movie. This could have been like the second coming but of... It doesn't, like, there is what? an unrated version available. Yeah, but it's just don't like know how good it is gore. compared to this. But. It doesn't no, no, feel like, like not even Not, not, like not just gore, but tone, like if they you know? had been left alone because left alone and gone with everything, like say they of everything they originally shot. Like, just because the Weinsteins came in and said, we don't like this, reshoot all of it, doesn't mean what they made before was a bad movie. Because I don't trust the taste of the Weinsteins. They, it I seems agree. like they fucked Definitely. this up. They mm-hmm. fucked up Scream 4. Mm-hmm. So I don't trust their taste in the horror movies. No. 
I would, I'd like to see, like, originally, before everything stopped, there was reshoots and rewrites and everything, original cast. I would have, I'd like to see what that was going to end up being if they had been left alone. We didn't get that. What we got was this. It's not, it's not scary. There's nothing, it's the, I mean, I'm not a fan of werewolf movies anyway, so I'm just going into this going to be like, eh, all right, not that interesting to me. The script is, I mean, what we ended up with is just like, it's nothing good. These characters aren't. They're just saying things. They're not talking to each other. It doesn't seem natural. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, and there's like this whole thing about the you know like they're getting the superpowers of being a werewolf, yeah. but like they never transform into a fucking werewolf. No, like, in the movie, like, that's like, what I'm saying. There's no werewolf. There's a, there's a just a couple at the it? end, and there's just nothing, nothing like like you said. It keeps moving, but there's yeah. like. Uh, I, on what I don't know, it does feel like it should be a WB movie because it's about like the the quote unquote dramatic relationships between these people and the love interests and this guy comes in and they come in like they're focusing on the wrong shit for this movie and it's not interesting to watch at all. Ugh, I don't like this movie. Um, <laughs> don't don't watch Cursed. I mean, just because it's in their filmography, like you you there's nothing in this you can like there's nothing good you'll get from this movie. Um, it's not scary. It's not like it's the bottom of the rung for both Kevin Williamson and Wes Craven. I do not recommend this movie for any reasons. The bottom of the rung. Clearly, you haven't seen The Hills Have Eyes Part Two. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty bad. Like, I, there's, and there's certain things that I do like about this movie because it does, like, it has a, a little bit of an essence of scream in there. Like, you can feel it at certain parts. Like, the atmosphere is <laughs> just a whisper. Scream. Just it is. It just it, and it really is. There's a whisper scream. of scream. <laughs> this is like scream. Scream. Throughout it, there's just it hits that point just a little bit every now and again, and it just makes me want to go watch Scream. Yeah, because I love Scream so much. And I, they were really trying for it, but too many people fucked with this movie, and I, it's, I mean, it's a mess. And like Colin said, it doesn't feel patchwork. It feels it's a complete movie, but it's just not, uh, it's just not interesting, and it's not funny. It's not horrifying. It didn't make me feel anything. <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg's the best part of this movie because he's fucking playing Jesse Eisenberg, and he's a fucking goof. Yeah. Uh, the the Milo Ventimiglia stuff is, I mean, it does get kind of funny when it he's just like he had the it, best arc. It, in it, his it, home. he it, did. It was like he's a you know he's a bully at school and he's calling you know, everybody, calling a, fag, everybody a fag. Yeah. And they're gay and everything, and then he's just like, "You were the only one that knew, right?" Like that's the that is it's the most complete. I part honestly of this movie. was like, "Ooh, this is really offensive." Until he had the turn of like, yeah, no, he actually right. is he gay. Is, like, I, yeah. yeah. But that was like, yeah, whatever. That I mean, it's, yeah. it's very like, it's at the end where like he's like, hey, "Yep, you're kissing my girl over there." Like, yeah, what the like. Again, it all ends up in a weird place. Like that girlfriend things- was his beard. That was his like cover for. Do you think I she don't- knew? No. Yeah, what? Oh. The, uh, I'm hoping like she knew. She's like, I'll do this. But for she you. clearly had like feelings for Jesse Eisenberg. Right. She kept like hanging out with him constantly. But I think that's the thing. She's like, uh, she's she's the beard for him. So yeah. she's not getting any action, but she knows it. So she's like attracted right. to guys. Who she's like, I just but I like want someone to love who's not gay. I was I was like as soon as my love to me they started off with like you're a fag you like to touch dudes blah 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 that's why you're on the wrestling team I was like oh god this is really uncomfortable to watch it is. It's, and then it is like and then when it made the turn of like no he's saying that because he's insecure because he is actually gay I was yes. like like I don't want to say that justified it but it almost it, it almost it did helps, it, yes. it, hel- it made it easier to swallow right. and you, you know get what they were like, doing yeah and, like it's it's weird to because see there that, are that, dudes like that that yes. are like really like they project their feelings onto someone else yeah. you know and it's weird that like that's one of the like through lines for the uh, it's like a, a he had the best arc. piece of character yeah. that it's still exists in this movie like mm-hmm. that stuck with it that is contained and it survived somehow of this it's probably like the it's the, definitely the funniest part of the movie like I enjoyed Eisenberg and uh, and him Ventimiglia d- doing that yeah. part like it was funny to me like that is the best part of the movie but other than that yeah like I said it's a mess and I don't recommend it <laughs> I pass it to you <laughs> thank you it's on your head now um yeah, I, I think that we've all pretty much um, pretty much said it. It's 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 one of those movies that it it it, it feels off, and you can't fully pinpoint why. Um, it, it, it you know what it is? It's like um, we're talking about the wine scenes taking over. If you ever worked a job where you have a really great team and you all flow together, you're just like a well-oiled machine, and then 
the manager who doesn't know shit comes in and tries to do things. Yep. It's like, no, it's like, no, we got this. We you got, don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Leave, you're making it worse. That's what this movie is. <laughs> That's what the wine scenes yeah. are to this movie. That's exactly yeah. what, That's what they it are is. to like yeah. film. Right? To, to, yeah. to yeah. film in general. Yeah. yeah. Halloween uh, franchise is yeah. theirs. Yeah. The Hellraiser franchise is theirs. Yeah. I mean, they don't they, trust it was horror there. movies. Halloween yeah. is out like, now, but it like, was theirs and they fucked it up. And like we've said before, this is 2005. Wes Craven is very well established as a solid horror director. And yet they still didn't trust him to make a good horror How movie. What that? the fuck? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like he just gave you I mean, scream one, two, three, say what you will about three and everything, but he just gave you those movies and you're gonna just sit there and fuck with his and shit. Shit all yeah. over it. Shit and all just over it. Recently. Like, yeah. This is yeah. But Ugh. um yeah, like I said, I think we I think we've hit everything pretty well. Um I, I just I did not feel I did not feel a relationship. I did not feel. I, did not feel. <laughs> I didn't. No, I did not believe any of these relationships. I any of them. Like there was no feeling. The writing was just horrible. Um, I, the only reason I had fun with this was nostalgia. That's that's it. That's you the you only really reason. you enjoyed a lot of that. In this I movie. did, but that's the only reason I enjoyed it was nostalgia. It's like all these actors are actors that I loved growing up and. It was it was fun to see them all together, but other than that, I I can't I can't recommend this movie. I, I it, it went on, it went on way too long. It just it started to drag after a while. For ninety seven minutes. Yeah, it really did. It just did not end. Um, yeah, it 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 wasn't boring. It was. I mean, it. I don't want to say it kept my attention necessarily. Um. But not boring, but not interesting. Yeah, but it just it just moves on its own. Yeah, this movie is an enigma. Like you can't really pinpoint any of it. It's just <laughs> it really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's not bad enough to be like for you to look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's oh, bad. I can see it right yeah. there. It's, it's like, not you terrible, but no, it's, it's not, not great. It's yeah, not, it's a weird it's, yeah, middle it's point. Not my least favorite thing we've watched on the show. It's yeah. not the. It's not it's terrible. It's just. All right, I've seen it. Move on, so, you know. Yeah, good. yeah, I have to, I have to give this movie a giant werewolf middle finger to itself. A finger? Yeah, finger. Yeah. <laughs> giant werewolf yeah. finger. I'm drunk. So. A Judy Greer finger. Yeah, Judy yeah. Finger. I, I Judy Greer. We didn't mention Judy Greer at all. Who doesn't love Judy Greer? Yeah. Too bad she had to do this movie. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I I can't recommend it, Michaela. So I. Uh, <laughs> Unlike Sean, I love werewolf movies. I collect them. My oh. my horror movies at home are separated by subgenre, and there is a horror. Yeah, there's a, there is a werewolf, werewolf movie. That, there there is, and uh, I bought this movie when it like Hollywood Video was going out of business, and they had like twenty copies of it. And I was like, sure. I'll take it. Hey, you know, um, in addition to like twenty other movies I bought at the same time. That you can tell, but look look, you can see the thing on the side there from yeah. Hollywood Video. Um, <laughs> but uh, this movie. I don't watch it because it's a great werewolf movie. I watch it because it's a nice time capsule. Like yeah. it, uh, it's you know, it's I love Dawson's Creek growing up. So like you know, seeing Pacey Witter post Dawson's Creek, yeah. and then you know, this got, is definitely a guilty pleasure. Oh movie. yeah, like this, I watch this more for like if okay, if you recast this movie with no one famous, I'm not gonna watch this movie. No. You yeah, know, like no. you know, what I'm saying I watch this because it's Christina Ricci, Jesse Eisenberg, Joshua Jackson, Chan Elizabeth, Judy Greer. Lance Bass, Nick Offerman, yeah, um, you know, Maya. fucking Maya uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> Maya. Yeah. Um, that's right. what, and like just the time capsule that this movie is. Even though at the same time, like it's weird because this movie came out in two thousand five, but it feels so much older than yeah, that. So you know, it old. feels so much older. It's not a good werewolf movie. It's not the worst werewolf movie I own in my subgenre collection. That that title goes to Skinwalkers. That is an absolutely terrible werewolf oh, movie. Is it uh, bad? bad? It's very bad. Don't ever watch it. It is not a werewolf movie. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, worse, yeah. Bad. Skinwalkers is very bad. Um, I yeah, I watched this movie because of who's in it, not because of what it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's seventy percent teen movie, thirty percent werewolf movie. Um, I would movie. really, if I can time travel, I would go back in time and kill the wine scenes and, you know, let this movie be exactly what it should have been from the get go. I, yeah, like I said, in my Noah's Ark of werewolf movies, this is not going to make it on. Um, it but 
if you're someone like me who would love to see Lance Bass make a cameo in a werewolf movie or like to see Shannon Elizabeth in the first 10 minutes or, you know, Joshua Jackson be a bad guy because you don't get to see him do that very often. That's very true. Watch Cursed. But other than that, if you're expecting a great werewolf movie, don't watch this. Because if you're expecting fair, a good werewolf movie, don't watch this. To be fair, yeah. though, does anyone watch Shannon Elizabeth when she doesn't show her boobs? Yeah, that's a good point. All right, then. She was okay in the Night of the Demons remake. Throwback to last week. Oh, shit. <laughs> I will say I've met two people that were starring in this movie. I've met Milo Ventimiglia and Shannon Elizabeth, both at separate conventions. Completely polarizing experiences, meeting them both. Ooh. I will not elaborate because I don't want to shame anyone on the podcast. We'll talk about it off mic. But um shame them. This way maybe they'll uh Milo Ventimiglia <laughs> was a was a total gentleman. Shannon Elizabeth was a different experience. Not a total gentleman, <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth. No. I will just say <laughs> Shannon, we'll Shannon Elizabeth does not need to do conventions and that is very clear. Um but I I would say if if the cast list attracts you, watch it with low expectations. If not, don't bother watching it. Um Super, super minute detail I noticed. Did you get okay? So the painting on the wall in their house with the two the two deer that's yeah. like right above the picture frame. Right above the picture okay, frame, yeah. maybe I'm reading way too much into this, but did any guys ever see Denny Villeneuve's Prisoners? Yeah, yeah. You remember the painting of the two deer in the field? Is that no. the same painting? Uh, I don't remember. That's hanging on their know. wall. I didn't see the one in okay. the movie. But like in in Prisoners, like they zoom in on it a bunch at the beginning, and then like it's in the hallway a lot in Hugh Jackman's house mm-hmm. in Prisoners. I'm I think listeners tell me if I'm wrong. I think it's the same painting. We'll we'll I plug think. this movie back in, and yeah. it's the only yeah, yeah. reason we're plugging this movie yeah. back in. <laughs> I think we'll it might be the it. same painting, I think but we'll I don't know for sure. Prisoners uh, is a good movie. It's fantastic movie. Definitely go watch Prisoners. Just leave on a happy note. Prisoners is a good movie. Prisoners is fantastic. It's a really good movie. No, watch Cursed for the cast list not because it's a great werewolf movie that's all I have to say about it and, well uh, I got a question for you yeah uh, maybe we, I asked you this before mm-hmm. maybe last week off Mike you have a werewolf section mm-hmm. you got any uh, Paul Nashy movies in there Paul Nashy the great maybe. Spanish uh, actor oh, well yeah. I don't know about that but he played a character called Valdemar Daninsky in 13 movies where he was a werewolf wolf I might man type. Jesus I don't know I might the only reason I ask is because that's like a lame segue into my pick for next week. Oh. Go for it. Which Let's is hear Colin it. Let's is hear setting it. himself up. Yep. It is not Knock a it Paul down. Nashie oh movie. Oh, my God. Knock it down. But it's not a Paul Nashie movie. It's a Spanish movie where it's his native country, Spanish-Portuguese movie. We're going way back, 1972. Ooh. We're going to take a look at uh, a movie called The Tombs of the Blind Dead, about uh, blind, back from the dead, skeletal Templar knights. Oh, they can only hunt by hearing? Uh, Templar knights? Yeah. All right. Might be interesting. What do they hunt? I have so many questions. For blood. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. So that's your homework assignment. Watch that movie before we uh, talk about it. And until then, ladies and germs, we thank you for sticking with us. And the basement is going dark.